All right. Chester Zoda, I presume. <laughs> How's it going? It's been a little while. All right, man. How are you? Doing good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, appreciate you taking a little bit of time. Hey, what's your uh, like daily schedule like? I mean, are you just working like nine hours a day on stuff or or is your life a little more I don't know, you know, not that scheduled and regimented at this point. Well, it kind of fluctuates. Um, right now, I'm uh, working more closely with my private clients. And so that typically oh. takes, uh, like, we only work with a couple of clients at a time. So that typically takes maybe an hour a day. Um, and then I spend the remaining hour yeah. on my team. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. I didn't realize that you also did private clients. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I'd love just to hear a little bit of your story. I mean, if you're willing to tell me, you know, uh, uh, you know, how you, um, how you came up with the idea. I mean, it's a great idea, at least. I mean, you're not the first guy to think of how to help people to do a digital course, but like your approach and helping doctors specifically. And, you know, that's, I mean, it's I'm, I, like, it's a great idea. I just like, I wonder how you came up with it. Yeah, hundred percent. By the way, uh, I just want to say that new book, Tony Robbins behind you. Uh, oh yeah. this one. Course. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you find it? Uh, I'm only, I, I, I just, I just started it. If you see, I, I, there's a, <laughs> So I'm only if like a couple pages in, so I cannot render any judgment on it yet. Uh, but I'll let you know. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, it's up our alley, and so I'm wondering, yeah, you know, is this, you know, good medicine, cutting edge medicine, or is this like crystals and energy and maybe stuff that's a little bit harder to. You, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I have no idea what I'm 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 about to read. So, uh, but I'm eager to eager to see what he has to say. He's a I smart like guy. Because I, yeah. I I just pre-ordered it yesterday, so it's funny. Oh, you did. Funny that it's funny that I'm seeing it right now. But uh, yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I can't wait to get into it more. I've been I've been busy, but uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, so I mean, great idea. I mean, did you just? Well, I you were a practicing doctor for a while, right? Or did you not even ever actually practice? Yeah, I did emergency medicine, so. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. Okay, so, I mean, it's amazing to break out of that. It's just, how did you do that? How did you, how did you leave medicine? I mean, I'm trying to leave medicine as I'm sure a lot of your clients are obviously, so I wanna be like you. How did you, how did you do this? I mean, did you have a coach or mentor? Did you buy a course yourself or, you know, did you just think of it? Yeah, so um, to answer your question, I mean, I've always been like fascinated with education. And I think, you know, I think most people would be blind to if, if they don't agree that, you know, the education system is just kind of broken the way it is. Um, we're teaching kids to just kind of memorize, to study things for exams, but there's no practical utility to other, um, to actually applying in life. And that's a part of the reason I chose medical school. I, I was looking for a challenge, number one. But also looking mm -hmm. for something that, you know, not only will guarantee me a job, but also it was a practical and applicable skill set as opposed to um, things like maybe, I don't know, studying for a Bachelor of Arts or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And so um, that was my intention going into medical school. The reason I even stumbled upon something like this was um, I had a men I had a I guess a mentor back in medical school. Um, I was working closely with my first client. My first client was actually a ophthalmologist and I was doing clinical research with him, um, preparing like case series, case studies. And I would see that every day he would have to commute to work, share his knowledge, and it would just be the same stuff over and over again. Um, mm -hmm. It was just the same workshops, the same PowerPoint slides. And I was like, why, why didn't we just, packages into what why don't we well first of all record this so that you can publish it and reach a wider audience in the asia pacific region 
And so that's what we helped him do. And now he's, you know, generating this passive income, but establishing himself as an authority in the uh, ophthalmology space. And so he was my first client. And then the faster I started growing, both myself as my was my clients, the mm-hmm. faster other people uh, started seeing my results and they wanted to learn how to do the same. And um, at first I just kind of ignored them, but the more I started growing my clients' businesses or the, my clients' education, um, the more wow. they started to reach out and it just kind of and these are just. I, I mean, these were just doctors that were kind of like around you. I mean, you weren't doing like any like marketing really at that stage, right? That was kind of just more like word of mouth or that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. It was, um, it was um, also like I was just solving problems. So I identified a problem. I found a solution. People started catching on and then mm-hmm. it just kind of snowballed from there. Man, it's brilliant. That's exactly how I think. I'm the same way. I love it. Wow. So yeah, it kind of happened really organically and man, that's, man, that's the best way when an idea happens like that. It just, it, you know, it presented itself. I mean, obviously. And so you seem like you have an awful lot of knowledge. I mean, just, you, you know, doing your course and, and, you know, listening to you help or, you know, to answer the questions. And it, I, I mean, it's clear that you've either done a lot of homework or you've just spent a lot of time doing this or spent a lot of time studying it or, I mean, everything from the marketing and, you know, how to come up with, you know, making sure that it's viable and all the, I mean, it's, I mean, it's really good stuff. I mean, is that just stuff that you learned along the way or, or did you get education there as well? Um, in terms of the marketing or what else? Yeah, yeah. The marketing is a big aspect of it. I mean, you seem like, you know, an awful lot about that. I mean, I'm sure I could pay a person with a, like a, like a marketing expert would be expensive that has knowledge, you know, like you do. Yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned that because, well, let me let me grab something real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So even back in even back in medical school, I was already like reading a lot of books just in order mm-hmm. to kind of procrastinate from the library. And so mm-hmm. a few of the really powerful books has been like the Twenty Two Immutable Laws of Marketing. Um, oh, interesting. This book really shifted my perspective on a lot of things. And uh, it showed me that, you know, a lot of the desires that we have in our everyday lives, like why, why we even go to the grocery store, why is Louis Vuitton marketed like so expensive, even though it's just bags made in China? Um, why do people buy Apple? <laughs> um, and it just distilled it down into basically 22 immutable laws of marketing. And I'm going to I'm gonna have to read it. I, I mean, I'm going to get it. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a really thin book. You can finish it in one sitting. And I, I found this stuff fascinating. Um, Interesting. And then other things like the effective executive. So, I was, I, to be honest, I read this book just to be more productive in med school. Uh, I was just looking to maximize my hours so that I'm making sure I'm studying the right topics. So, so I actually ace my exams. And uh, obviously, that book was for business people, but you can apply yeah. the same principles in in medicine, in med school studies, and so on and so forth. Dang, bro. I mean, you're an overachiever is what you are. How long have you been doing this now? The, um, uh, digital doctor and I mean, what's the timeline on all of this? Uh, digital doctor has been around for almost three years now. Okay. I mean, is that from that like original client, that ophthalmologist that you helped or like when you like launched it as a program? Um. That's when, that's one of my first client, I would say. Wow. That's, that's amazing growth. Like that's incredible. That's awesome. So how long were you practicing in, in the ER? Roughly? I was, what do you mean? Like, um, how long were you like in attending in the ER, actually working in the uh, ER? I worked, I mean, I basically jumped around. So I, I practiced both in Hong Kong as well as New York. And so, oh, oh wow, yeah. So I spent uh, roughly one and two, one to two years in New York, and then in in Hong Kong, I spent maybe like a couple of more years. Yeah, I yeah. I jumped around a lot. I, I worked in the ICU and then emergency, oh. and I actually wanted to become an ophthalmologist. That's why I w- I was doing like clinical research, just to yeah. be um, yeah. 
yeah, but it's very competitive. <laughs> yes, it is. I also wanted to do ophthalmology as well. My stepdad's an ophthalmologist. And so that's how I, I started, but I ran into obstacles. I'm sure much like you did. So ended up in internal medicine, but yeah, that's, uh, um, uh, okay. So you've, I'm, I, <laughs> I don't know. It, like, it seems like you've accomplished an awful lot in, in, in a pretty small amount of time. So that's just, you know, impressive. And I guess I understand a little bit better about how, you know, how much, you know, because you've got a lot of knowledge about launching a course. And I mean, I, I mean, just, you know, do, I guess it's just doing it and, you know, learning the marketing and the studying that you've done. It's just, I don't know. It's really impressive. Like it's absolutely really impressive. What's a, uh, uh you know, what's your end game here? What's next? Are, are you, are you, is there another idea you got in the, in the works or are you just, I'm, you know, working on developing, you know, what I got going, you know, right now, the best I can. My life goal is to decentralize and democratize medicine. I think the medical system is completely broken and the education system is also completely broken. And in the, between those two Venn circles, Venn diagrams, there's an intersection of medical education that I want to decentralize and democratize. There's not only are like, there's a lot of underserved communities out there that just don't have access to this health information or health education. You know, I, I did my, I did my elective in Tanzania and uh, those people, they don't have access to the medication or the, the medical education that we have uh, in say the United States or in more developed countries. Um, wow. Very underserved. What a noble, noble cause. And uh, I, I just, like, I all of a sudden feel like, um, man, I haven't been thinking globally about this because it's easy to be exasperated with medicine in the United States for you know reasons I'm sure that you know, but also it, I've lost the perspective that there are people that are trying to practice medicine around the world who are doing it with both hands tied behind their back and they're not getting near the training that we get, you know, we're really like spoiled. So appreciate you opening my eyes on that. Cause that's a great point. And I love the direction of that. That's a great why, if that's, if that's what's in your heart, you know, to go do man, a guy like you, I think you can make headway. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, we all need something exciting to wake up in the morning, right? It can't just be like, Go to work, pay your bills, pay your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> we all yeah, yeah, yeah. exciting. Uh, uh, so how do you accomplish a goal like that? Because that's because that's you know, the scale of that is massive. And so how do you, you know, measure the success or you know, what's the direction? Because there's a lot of different things you could do. I mean, you know, you can go international, you can start to build an academy, a program, an institute, a database, whatever that it is, you start to look for ways to give it away for free to people. I mean, there's, right, right, I, I just, I mean, off the cuff, it seems like there's a lot of, of different approaches to kind of a, a problem like that. How do you think about how you make the next step towards this greater cause? Yeah, I mean, with such a, with such a go, I mean, uh, every journey starts with uh, a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Right. And it just comes down to chunking things down. I mean, we have, you know, there's, we have, we have human beings that have eaten an entire airplane. I forgot who, who the guy was, but yeah, he did it just by eating, chunking it down and somehow ate an entire airplane. And so, and so, right. <laughs> and so, I mean, like I, I'm just getting started. I'm only in my third year. And so, the yeah. part that I want to tackle first is the medical education aspect, right? Um, mm -hmm. Just by empowering these doctors to share the knowledge that they already had, spend years and years of their medical schooling, their uh, academic background, their clinical experience, and just package it into an asset that generates income and impact, um, even while they sleep. Um, that way they can have the financial freedom, time freedom, and location freedom that they want. And so... It's a, you know, obviously this is very personal to me as well because um, I was working <laughs> crazy hours during COVID. And so I was scratching my own itch, trying to solve my own pain point. And yeah. uh, I think that's it. That's the best way because it's a win-win situation, right? I'm helping these doctors share their knowledge. And then these doctors are helping their patients or their other doctors or 
other people around the world um, with their knowledge. And so I'm basically like creating a ripple effect in terms of the impact that I can make. On yes. top of that, it doesn't require much of my time because I only package it into a system. I build out all the systems, all the tech for you guys. So everything yeah. plug and play. Um, yeah. And uh, it just kind of disseminates and I let it grow from there. Um, yeah. We have, I mean, we have doctors that are teaching things like how to manage epilepsy, right? Life and death conditions. We have people that are teaching other doctors how to start their own private practice. Um, uh, one of our star, star students, Dr. Mai, he's uh, helping eliminate um, uh, progressive myopia in children. So basically like a leading cause of blindness in children. And so the, it's, it's crazy to look at the impact that I can potentially make. And yeah. I can take any of the credit, obviously. Uh, I just kind of brought my own expertise and helped them bridge the knowledge that they already have. Sure. The yeah. Uh, you, yeah, but, you know, being the broker for change, it, it, you know, I mean, there has to be a broker, to, you know, for something like this to happen. And that's really, you know, what it is. I mean, if you're bringing, and that's what you're doing is you're helping people who don't know how to do it helping them, you know, to bring it to a, a larger audience. And, and I mean, that's really a movement is what it is. And, and, you know, I think it's happening all over the place, you know, not just in medicine, I think, it, I mean, this is the beginning of something, right. And I'm sure that there are other, you know, movements that are aligned with, you know, I mean, even the thing that I'm, you know, doing and, you know, looking to start to build like a little bit of like a healthcare academy is, is actually, you know, my idea, you know, I think I see the need as, you know, you do as well. Uh, I see a need with helping, uh, you know, like almost making it even easier for people like a doctor, like, look, if you have a course, I'll, I'll actually do all the work. I'll just have a couple meetings with you and I'll just build the entire course. I'll host it on a platform with other doctors and you'll get a huge cut of every sale. Uh, and, you know, just doing it like that. But, you know, basically with the goal of building like a library over time, you know, there are lots of, I mean, you're meeting them all the time, you know, to, 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 you know, to bring them out of the, I don't know. I mean, I've met a lot of doctors along the way, I guess, I'm sure that you have as well. And just, you know, why don't you do um, a, a, a course? And a lot of them, it's like, they just don't have the time they just don't, you know, you know, want to do it or whatever else, you know, that it, I just don't want to get into it. I mean, it's all the people that turn you down. It's the people that don't actually buy your thing. It's like, well, those are the people. Okay. I'll hold your hand even more. Like you really should do this. I'm coming to your place. I'm going to have a camera in hand and let's make a course, you know, together, you know, to have a person to help them to make a course really to walk them do that a little bit more and then yeah you know just you know build it over time i don't want to teach people how to do a digital course on their own that already exists you can go to zoda.com and you know get that information and knowledge and that's you know a great place to go obviously so uh if you want even more than that then maybe we have a platform that you can use so i don't know you know that's you know, the direction that we've, you know, that, I mean, that wasn't even just my idea. That was a couple of other people that I'm working with that are also in healthcare. And, and uh, so I don't know, I guess I get it. I guess I get exactly what's in, you know, your heart and, and, you know, this other idea that I have is parallel, you know, for sure. Absolutely. But I mean, it helps, you know, the greater cause. Um but like, I'd love all that stuff to eventually to get to a point where uh, it can cost less and less and less for the public to consume over time. You know, the larger the database gets and the more that, you know, that kind of thing, then, um, you know, not every doctor is going to be able to make $100,000 a month, right? I mean, there's going to be a limit to how many of us can be the educators, versus the doctors who are learning and consuming and so just you know bringing more of them out i mean really growing your vision I just i'm um, you know i guess i'm a disciple and uh you know just you know it 
you know, my idea, I guess, you know, is kind of like your idea. I didn't, I didn't even realize that this was your idea, but I guess our ideas are, are kind of alike. I didn't, I guess I just realized that now, but yeah, I'm sure that an obstacle along the way, this must be a thing that you must face a lot. I would think there are people that have great hearts and great minds and they're really smart and they have a really bad idea for a thing for, for a course. Like it's a really small demographic. I mean, it's a passion thing, but there's just not a lot of people that are going to buy a course like this. I'm sure you have run into that a lot. Is that something, I mean, do you steer people in any way uh, if they do the digital doctor as a program or is that only when they work with you like privately, do you help them to kind of decide what their course should be? Oh, well, we actually, I mean, the, deciding on the course idea is so important. We just, we covered this in step one of the program, right? Right. No, no, no. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Right. It's there. But I mean, there are people even doing that and, you know, they get to the point that they believe it's a great idea. They've done some steps and they kind of, I mean, it's almost like a confirmation bias. You know, they go to a bunch of people that they may know and make sure that they, you know, yeah, that's a great idea because, you know, we're into this equally as, as you are and, I don't know. I, I, I mean, it may not be an obstacle. You know, I remember that there was a lady on the call that I was on with you, a sweet lady, and she had a great idea of helping, of coming up with a course for the caregivers of people with dementia. And I thought to myself, what a great cause and what a great idea. And I love her heart. And then, uh, but then I thought, man, that's going to be that's not going to be a very high ticket course. In fact, that's almost the kind of thing that, you know, we should be giving away for, for nothing, you know, you know, to people almost, that's almost that important. You know, that's the kind of thing that you want to get in as many hands as you, you can. And I wouldn't want like us to bury or to be there where people, you know, they can't afford a $900 course is, you know, a caregiver. So I don't know, you know, that lady, it's like, I, I guess I would ask her the question, you know, is like, I mean, if you're not going to make quite as much money as maybe other, like, are you okay with that? Is it more about the passion, you know? Um, but I'm sure that's discussions that you have with people all the time. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I, I actually do have to hop off in 10 minutes, but I'll answer. Oh yeah, no, no, actually stop me anytime, by the way. I mean, I'll go on and on, so. Yeah, but I'll answer your question first. Um, to be honest, I don't think there's any, there's no, like you can turn any idea into an online course. Um, mm -hmm. I truly believe this. And I can list a few examples, but um, actually, in fact, I'll list a few examples. I've seen 15 year old kids teach courses on Minecraft. I've seen, I've seen kids, I mean, I've seen older people, I mean, teach courses on sailing, like how to sail. Right. Obviously, there's courses on how to cook, uh, filet mignon. Uh, there's obviously courses on um, uh, even going to space. Um, we are working with a NASA doctor, and you know she's in aerospace medicine. And so, you can honestly turn any course into uh, any idea into online course. I know I know this 15 year old kid that teaches other people in Denmark how to do sales, and he's doing multi multi million in, at the age of 15. He had. Two yeah, he had to talk to his mom just to get set up his LLC. So that's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, so any idea can be an online course. But I think the trouble that most doctors have is that they either don't believe it's even possible or mm -hmm. number two, that they don't have the self-awareness to know what they want. Because a lot of times, especially in the medical system, we kind of got our souls drummed out of us. We forgot what brings us joy. What do we actually want to do? And we just kind of followed the ladder without realizing it's pointed in the wrong direction or in a direction that's not really what we want right so um i think a lot of it's, it's almost like a soul searching experience like what what is it that i want to dedicate my life towards what is it i who is it that i want to serve what is it i want to teach and um it takes a while to figure out and so but i do think that you know if, as long as you follow the step one of the process you'll figure mm -hmm. it out as long as you're truthful where most yeah. people get lost is they think, oh, I need this specific market research. Oh, there's other people doing this, so it must be saturated. They look at other people, they look externally instead of looking internally. Like, who mm. is it that I even care about? Like, who is it that I even want to search, uh, help? 
And as long as you're clear with who it is, then emerges a problem and emerges a solution. And like, like something you resonate to, but we just find yeah. problems, we solve it. Man, I love it. I love your brain. I told you before already on the initial call, I already knew it, but now, you know, to get to know, you know, the man a little bit more than just the, you know, the executive that's on the zoom call with everybody, but rather to get to know the story of the person it's, you know, it's a cool story. It's really inspiring. I'm really impressed. I mean, I meet, I meet a lot of people in, in, in business, you know, being an entrepreneur, uh, you know, this isn't the only thing that I'm doing. I've got other things, other, you know, businesses and stuff that are, that are up and, and running or, you know, we're working on buildings. This is just one, you know, revenue stream basically. But, uh, um, I mean, it's nice to speak with a person like you. I mean, you've got, uh, 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 you know, you're very, very clear minded, uh, about all of this. And it's really impressive to see uh, uh, a person who has, has made it as far as you have with your thinking and knowing yourself, because there's not a lot of people that are like you. Maybe you know that already. So I'll tell you something you already know, but, um, so it's a pleasure to speak with you. It really is. You know, maybe we can have a chat again, you know, you know, one day and, and, catch up a little bit more, you know, especially as bigger, better things, you know, happen. I'd love to hear, you know, your wins. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was a pleasure talk, talking to you. We should, um, if you're open to it, we should feature you on the podcast. I'd love to learn your story as well. Sure. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I'm happy to. It'd be fun. Are you doing, I didn't know that you were doing a podcast. Are you doing a podcast? Uh, I'm starting one. I've, I've recently done two episodes. Um, oh, with other doctors in uh, the entrepreneurial space. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to learn more about your healthcare academy. Um, and, uh, oh, actually we recorded this, we recorded this uh, session. So this could, <laughs> this could be helpful for our, like within our community as well. Um, but- It'd uh, be the trailer for, yeah, I, that's right. It could be a trailer for something. No, I think that we could bring, uh, uh, I don't know, you know, we, I don't know, you know, we, our minds are alike. So, you know, we may be able to help each other, even if it's just a little advice about things from time to time or something like that, uh, you know, but, you know, but we're, you know, closely aligned with, with, you know, this, that's for sure. Uh, and I respect the hell out of you. So, um, you know, I'm glad to know you and it would be, it would be a pleasure to, you know, help in any way I can. Um, absolutely. Only because I, I, I believe in your mission as you do. Appreciate it's it. Good, Where can I thing. learn more about the healthcare academy you started? Uh, you can't learn anything because it's not launched. <laughs> so you, you cannot see anything about it yet. We're actually, we're building as much of it as we can uh, in advance before we, we launch it. And the way that we're going to do it is uh, it'll start initially with the course that we have um, uh, and then I've got a couple of other doctors that I'm 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 speaking with, but I'm I want to launch this one before um, we start to launch theirs. Uh, so a little bit of a process that I have ahead of me, um, you know. But we hope to have grown this uh, within you know a year. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, it's not ready to uh, uh, launch yet. Uh, our process is going to be um, actually. W one of the partners that's in on this, uh, she's a brilliant woman. I'm so glad to have her with us on, on the team. Um, it, uh, has been like a marketing rep, uh, has worked in healthcare for a long time. She's excellent at this. And so she's gonna bring a lot of value and we're gonna, it's gonna be more of a door to door approach um, at first uh, and only because we think it's gonna be a high ticket course may go for something eight, like eight to 10 grand or something like that. And so we may want to do those one-on-one, -on -one, um, uh, almost like a drug rep would, you know, knock on your door, you know, we're going to knock on your door about the course. Um, and we're going to approach it like that initially, and we're going to see how that goes. But anyway, I won't bore you with all the details of that, but, um, I'll talk more about it another time on what, you know, we're still a little bit planning stages as well. So it's not entirely materialized yet. So, I guess I'm giving you like a sneak peek or behind the scenes of the direction that we're headed. Um, but yeah, it's not ready to consume yet at this point. It's a bit of a build. Yeah, uh, sounds good. So you guys yeah. are on selling it at eight to 10K? Um, 
we're not going to start it at that, but it could land at that. It's a pretty detailed course. Um, and because you, a doctor can make as much money as they can on HEDIS, you can get direct value, measurable value. In fact, it's one of the modules. It's one of the lessons of one of the modules in our course is to find out how much money that you can really make, um, you know, right out of the gate as a primary care doctor with HEDIS, you know, in these HMOs, you know, the government thing. And they, you know, they give a lot of bonus money out and not a lot of doctors are doing very well with it. So, you know, they just don't know how. Um, so it's just to implement stuff into practice, into like a daily, you know, routine. Um, and if you do these things, then you'll help your patients get the measures met, you'll get the bonus money. And so uh, I think it's a course that may end up being able to retail for um, uh, a higher dollar amount. There's about 190,000 primary care doctors in the United States. Um, but of course, a lot of those are in groups and things like that. And so we don't quite know how we're going to deal with that as a problem just yet, because it may be a group that has multiple doctors in it. Well, they can only, they would only need to buy one course, right? I mean, they could all, you know, get in a room together and watch it. So it's, you know, is that the way we're going to do it? Or are we going to try to say, no, you have to buy one for each doctor? You know, we haven't decided exactly how we're going to, you know, deal with a couple of those issues, but anyway, Again, I don't mean to bore you with all this. This is, you know, my stuff that we're, you know, working out, but, um, you know, we're getting there. Sounds good. Let me know if you yeah. need help. Uh, I'd be, I'd love to help out. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, maybe I'll give you an update on some things as we get a little bit closer and just, you know, give you a, I don't know, just an update as again, one of your disciples. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, pleasure talking to you and, uh, take yeah. care. uh, good. Hey, uh, is that number that I got uh, uh, a text. Is that your your mobile, or is that a good number for you? Or or that's a good number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. I didn't know if it was like a like a business number or went through or like a robot was doing this or something. I wanted to be sure it was <laughs> you know actually a human. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey. Does it sound scripted? <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't sound scripted. Okay. I mean, it had the Elon Musk thing in there, which is still confirmed, by the way. I thought you were going to say, I'm going to build spaceships. I'm waiting for it. All right, man. Hey, listen, I'll talk to you, uh, you know, later on. It's a pleasure though. Yeah. A pleasurable uh, conversation. Take care. All right, man. I'll see you. Good night. Bye-bye.